sit people, I popped them into the waiting room. I'm thinking the next time we do this, I'll have people automatically come in. But I wanted to start on the high side to learn. All right, so uh, for those of you that don't know me out there in District 7 120 land, uh, my name is Tom Brown. I am the District 7120 Public Image Chair, or Coordinator, or whatever the title is. Uh, I reside with the Elmira Rotary Club down here way south, very far from Rochester, but I love coming up. Uh, I put together this uh, Public Image Now webinar. Actually, um, this was uh, Shanghai from another district down in Florida. Uh, they sent me the template of what they did, and I freely adapted it to us. And so if you know anyone that wants to slide decks, I will freely let anyone out there have it. Um, it's not a problem. I think we all need to share. There's no reason to reintroduce uh, resources when we don't have to. So moving on. Oh, look at that. Let's get there. All right. So uh, there's been a lot of talk about the ills of social media causing isolation and various mental issues with folks. I mean, if you think about it, uh, there uh, the extroverts out there are really suffering a lot. Um, uh, the huggers, they're suffering just as bad. Uh, so, I mean, there's different kinds of issues that come up to us healthy ones that aren't with the COVID. Uh, but one of the things that have been talking about in the, in the pre-COVID days is that the social media and Facebook was isolating everybody. and People are not having friends anymore and they're going out and the social media is going to be the death of the society because nobody really talks to anybody face to face or have a conversation. But in a huge slice of irony, uh, I saw this article in the Wall Street Journal a couple days ago uh, about how social media was a threat to human interaction, but it is now being hailed as a tool that can be leveraged to maintain our connections and stay engaged with others. So uh, the exact same solution comes to the exact opposite conclusion. Um, and it's just like any other tool out there. Uh, a hammer can be abused and it can be used to build things. It can be used to break thumbs. And so uh, one of the things is we're being forced to look at this tool in a nice way uh, where we are not social distancing. Okay, what we want to focus on is uh, it's not social distancing. We're distancing ourselves physically uh, but we want to use tools like this to not social distance mentally and emotionally. Uh, we need to learn how to use social media to maintain our relationships and connections and engagements among Rotarians and our friends during these challenging times. Now we can stay together to stay apart. We come together to stay apart and at the end of this time I'm going to be sharing some specific Zoom tips on how to use Zoom uh, since that's new to us, but let's figure out different ways that we can creatively, creative, creatively, there you go, I'll just go with that, use tools. Now it's interesting how many of these social channels out there are seeing a huge influx of users. Uh, and I have to show big props to every social tool out there. None of them have crashed. And that's the big thing. Because if you look at that time chart there, this is in Italy, and you can see the total number of users skyrocketed in mid-March. It just went over a thousand percent use. And for those of you that are involved in technology in any way, shape, or form, uh, that is a huge surge on computer servers. And it didn't break down. None of the social channels broke down. Some of them got glitchy. Don't get me wrong on that. Um, I, our church and some of my other uh, organizations have been using Facebook live streaming. And uh, one of the things that will happen is it will pause, but it doesn't lose anything. It just catches up. And so uh, by the end of a 30 minute sermon, it's no longer synced. I'm about four minutes behind because it's catching up. And uh, that happened early on. And then what Facebook has done now is if you go Facebook live, they automatically buffer about 40 seconds before they actually make it live. now. So they, their servers and the internet is going very, harsh and we're using the the bandwidth significantly um, some organizations have started um, holding back on high-def videos and streaming regular videos 
in an effort to find and increase bandwidth out there. So uh, recently, in the last two weeks, I've used Zoom, WebEx, GoToMeeting, Facebook Live, FaceTime. Someone uh, allowed me to use Microsoft Teams with them and Skype. So there are plenty of applications out there for us to use, and they have a lot of similarities. But one of the neat things that we need to do is we need to get out of our comfort zone and go in and use these tools to get other people involved um, and have a grain of um, uh, patience with them. Uh, my mother, uh, bless her soul, is uh, still doesn't have a camera and trying to install Zoom on her phone four days later still not accomplished. So we're working on that and there are others out there. So, I mean, if we can help them in some way, shape or form, uh, uh, and I have to have remote support her because she's actually in Texas. So uh, there's some social distancing there. So using today's news out here, we are working to adapt to the new normal. Even at the highest level governments, they are adapting to the new normal. Campaigns and candidates at all levels uh, have to change how they interact, even their behavior. So no more shaking hands and kissing babies from whatever aspect. It's a weird year for something like this to happen. And so uh, that's fine. It's very interesting to see how they adapt and what they're gonna end up doing uh, and to see actually how the various channels are adapting themselves. Um, I've seen Twitter come some out there. For some people, uh, it's business as usual. Same message, different playing field. These guys are very familiar with the tools. And our challenge is to find people in our clubs or our communities and start working with them to leverage the tools that they're comfortable with into other tools. Uh, for people like me and a lot of you out there, what we have to make sure of is it's not about being easy to us, all right? If we are gonna be the hoster or the user or the facilitator for within our community, then we need to make sure that we are learning and getting the curve ourselves and then helping other people use it. So we don't always get to choose the channel. I mean, we do in certain respects, but if someone says, look, I wanna use Zoom, then it's incumbent upon us to, all right, let's get as many people on Zoom as possible. So what can we do as Rotarians? Well, one of the first things we can do uh, is start sharing content. And right now, Rotary International, they are putting out targeted content. They recently posted on how clubs and districts can apply for grants as they respond to the COVID epidemic. And, and so there's a lot of things out there. The, the thing is, we don't have to create the content. It's already out there. We need to be filtering the content and we gotta be very careful that we don't put out stuff that is fake news, uh, to use that term. And in a lot of cases, we don't even really need to put out what's going on COVID response wise. I mean, that information is everywhere. So we don't have to regurgitate and share uh, the, the same stuff that's coming down from the government. Uh, and the reason for that is most people know where to get it themselves. It's better to just say, look, if you want the latest stuff, go to uh, the, 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 this site directly and they will have the newest instead of waiting for them for you to repost it. So, uh, when you are doing that kind of stuff, look at what can go out and don't flood your channel with other fluff. Uh, look at what the various Rotary digital properties are sharing. They put in a lot of time in the pot and some of them have done a lot of the work for us already. We just need to share the results. And it's a good idea to go back to two, to maybe three weeks worth of post and pick the ones you like best. So uh, over here, you can see that um, our Rotary president, uh, uh, Mark Maloney is sharing behind the scenes posts. And I love that kind of stuff. It's showing people in their natural environment. In this case, it looks like the president Mahoney, Maloney uh, actually invited us into his house. What a lovely dining room he's got, a beautiful picture on the wall, uh, and it allows us to get to know each other personally a little bit more to see what's going on. And you see my screen back here, and that's hiding all the clutter that's in my downstairs office as I adapt over here. Uh, and so you, you got to be careful what's behind you in certain cases. I mean, I did allude to the fact that one lady uh, took her phone into the bathroom with herself. 
Uh, not a good idea with a camera going. So be careful with what you're showing on that and be careful what's in your background if you're gonna do screen sharing. So uh, when we're trying to create personality and connections, we need to be somewhat authentic to ourselves and to those around us. Uh, let's go over here. So uh, virtual meetings are just starting again. Uh, we're still trying to go virtually. And one of the things I wanna caution you is do not recreate your club meeting verbatim. In other words, don't hold a virtual club meeting and do the exact same full hour on your digital thing here. Uh, some announcements and things like that, those can be put out as a line item or, or bullet points on an email that follows the meeting and just say, check out what's going on over here so that you don't waste a lot of time. Uh, I think most virtual meetings should be kept at 30 minutes or less now, just so you can have the things going and what's going on going there. Because one of the nice things is we can record this and we are recording this. And so people can go and see the meeting over here. Now, in our case, they're going to have to wait and go through the first 15 minutes of us in the meeting room and waiting room. But the whole point is you don't want an hour uh, and a lot of people aren't going to want to filter through it. So what we want to do is instead of recreating our club meeting, we want to look at this as an opportunity to break the stereotype of Rotary clubs as just old people talking. That stereotype completely still exists in a lot of places. And so this new reality that we are in, this new virtual reality we're in, are going to be showing the entire world in our community, all generations, that we can adapt to crises and continue with our mission. And so we can use this as an opportunity to get out to other people that's going on. We need to make sure that we're adding value to what we're doing and not just adding noise or fear. So we want to be positive and part of the solution. And we need to be the voice of call. Um, one of the things I posted on our club is uh, things that people can do in isolation. Uh, and it was a resource from the veterans on how to do different things. And so we're going to try and do you know, isolation number one, number two, number three. And so if you post it first to your Rotary page, your club page, and then tell your members to share it, then they could start seeing that Rotary becomes kind of a clearinghouse for what's going on, things that you can do. So instead of sharing neat things to all your friends, uh, find some people within the Rotary Club to share it there first and then share it out. So kind of filter it through the Rotary Club and then start sharing it out, and that gets the Rotary Club out more in your community. So that's one way that we can leverage the different things that's going on. If you look over on the screen, we got the Lynchburg Morning Rotary Club. They're, they're doing book suggestions. Well, that's good. Maybe the top 10 videos that you could do, the top 10 sci-fis. And so there's different things that we can do, and they don't all need to be tied to Netflix. Uh, Audible has made books available for free. Uh, online books, books that are uh, on tape, so to speak, or CD or, or MP3. And so all these suggestions, if we can start filtering them and using them, the Rotary Club of Bahamas over here is using a series of webinars, which by the way, all of these are something that we can do as participants ourselves. If you or one of your members need to make up a Rotary something or other, it's a great opportunity to look at what other clubs are doing and maybe transport or transplant a solution locally to our club or our district. Uh, we need to look at existing e-clubs that have been doing virtual meetings for years. They're definitely ahead of the curve here. And uh, if you think about it, uh, there are actually over 280 e-rotary clubs worldwide. And I, I have a link at the very end, 171 of them do their e-club meetings in English. So if you don't speak Swahili, joining that e-club probably wouldn't be very beneficial, but that kind of stuff is there. So that's a lot of fun. Um, what about virtual socials? There's no reason that we need to do just meetings online. We need to take what we've got here and transport it, transplant it to everything that we're doing. You can spend more quality time with friends you haven't seen in years. Uh, I know my wife was hooked up with some friends in, in Texas and they're actually streaming music to each other and they're writing a song. And they've been meaning to do this for years. Right? We should get together and write a song. Well, now you can because she's in her house, Shawnee's in her house, and they are strumming the guitar to each other 
and they're writing songs. So you can actually spend more quality time with friends that you haven't seen in years. Um, I saw some people playing chess over Zoom. So that's fine. You each have a screen there and you, you move yourselves and, and you have a chess game with people you haven't talked to and you're having a conversation over a board game. Uh, one of my favorites, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to do this. They put one beer in each room of their house. And so six of them had a beer in seven rooms and they did bar hopping. And so they went, oh, time to go to the next room. And they bar hopped and they had seven friends and they're just chatting time for another beer. And they moved to a different room to change the scenery of the, of the, 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 the phone on them. So there's a lot of different ways that we can be unique and have fun with this. And again, I said this a little earlier, we need to check in on our extrovert friends and our huggers out there. They are probably not okay. So be sure to check on them. I had a friend go into Amazon and send a three foot teddy bear to her hugger friend in another state. Um, you know, hug it, you know, that's fine. She was being authentic. She was doing this. Um, and you don't have to have this. You need to have somebody within the club willing to do this. So if they're willing to do the happy hour, or they're doing the bar hop or uh, let's do cheese or something like that. And then, um, I saw another meme out there where you see the picture of wine and cheese over there. Uh, she had grape juice and Velveeta block, and that was her cheese. You know, it's what you have in your fridge out there. Um, youth exchange people are still out around the world. Um, District 6970, what they have done is they allowed the outbound student in Italy to take over the Instagram, their district Instagram account for a day. And so they said, look, they, they highlighted it. They said, tomorrow, our student, she's still in Italy, is going to take over Instagram, and she's going to share her experiences from an Italian perspective of what's going over there. And so she controlled the district Instagram account for the whole day. And the nice thing is when they took it back, all that stuff is still there. So even if people missed it, they could go back and look. So if you've got Instagram accounts or something like that, that's something you could do where different people that you would trust would post something and take over. So you could do a, a takeover. Uh, be careful on who you do. Make sure you trust what they're going to do. And there's different ways to do that. The one caution I have for the clubs out there is if this seems really very cool and you want to start an Instagram page for your club or a Twitter page for your club, make sure this is something that you can continue after the COVID lockdown is over it's not going to do the club any good long term to get an instagram account you you've got gung-ho over it you get 80 90 followers and then when life re restores back to normal nobody ever posts to instagram again it's going to look horrible on you so you, it's great for short term but you need to have a long-term plan if you're going to add a social channel during your downtime with all this extra stuff that being said the other thing we should keep in mind is our rotor actors. How can we get them involved? This is their world per se, as far as technology goes. Get them involved with your club and see how they can come in and do different things. If you don't have a rotor act in your club, reach out to your college and find out what about the volunteer groups at the college. So maybe make a connection with some of the volunteer organizations in a college in your area and figure out what's going to go on and how you can use the kids to bring a, a sense of zing to your group, to your social channels of what you're trying to do. Tips from other organizations. Look, look, a lot of other clubs and organizations are ahead of the curve over here. And one of the clubs or one of the organizations that's both ahead of the curve and behind the curve is our education system. A lot of education systems have been dabbling or doing distance learning already. A lot of the education systems, on the other hand, were not ready to send the kids home and start distance learning in 48 hours. So they are doing different things. And so look at what your education system is doing in your area. And maybe they could use some help. And so maybe you can help supply some material to that. If you've got a good plan going through your Rotary Club already and you're posting stuff, maybe you could say, hey, look, this is stuff that we're posting for our Rotary Club. Maybe you can share it to your education system. And so now you become a source and you're plugging into 
somebody you should already be plugged into anyway, or you are strengthening that relationship if you've got a relationship. So don't forget what the education system is, and maybe you can borrow from them, make it mutually symbiotic. Um, there is one that is doing uh, a spirit daily theme, and so uh, when they're logging in, they, it's pajama day. And so they're logging in, everybody's in their pajamas. Uh, another one was crazy sock day, and then they're putting their foot up. You know, I'm not going to lean back and let you see my socks. They're white. Um, to see what's going on over there. Now it was Christmas in March. Um, we had uh, uh, one of the districts that I uh, visited their e-meeting on, and I did not know this. It was Hawaiian Shirt Day. And so they all had nice, very loud shirts and lays on. Some of them had lays uh, while they had their district meeting. So there's different things. And by the way, I'm going to come up for a theme for our next district meeting. So look out, here it comes. Different things that we can do on this. You can do daily themes, weekly themes. You can even have your own theme. Let's do red. Everybody dress in red. Uh, you can do memes. There are so many memes out there. Uh, what's a quarantine meme? Uh, how many, uh, just out of curiosity, raise your hand, have heard about the Tiger Show on Netflix? All right, I watched the first one out there, and then I saved my sanity and not watched the rest. However, my wife got hooked. It is um, just for you. Uh, it's like watching a train wreck in slow motion, a car wreck, or, or a sore tooth, and you just keep pushing on it to feel the pain. That's the show. It's just, it's weird moving on. All right. Uh, I do want to try to keep this fairly short for us. One of the things is District 7120 Me has created a response guide for our clubs, uh, and it is already going to be emailed to you. It's going to be posted on the social channels, and just before I got online with you, it is available on our district website. So uh, it's a nice six pager. Some of the stuff that we're talking about on this is going to be there. Uh, you can see page six. I have a lot of links involved in that. that gives you some of the things that you can do. Um, you can share it to anyone, including Mount Rotarians. Help them. Again, we want to be a resource out there and do a lot of different things. And so think about what's coming down over there. Look at that. Here's some of the tips I've got from other organizations, and they're also in that guide uh, for you. Have a member do a TED Talk. There's, and by a TED Talk, I'm talking 10 minutes or less on something that they are an expert at, even if it's on baking, because let me tell you, my youngest daughter is now baking uh, uh, all kinds of breads. We had some sort of ginger, ginger lemon bread that was absolutely delicious. So just, you know, whatever a TED Talk can, can do for you. Um, try to stay involved in your community as much as possible. Uh, record a local community leader and then share the recording as, as the presentation. Uh, we are having, um, our club is doing e-club meetings. We did our first one last week. Our next one is tomorrow, and you are all invited if you want. Um, and then the week after that, we are having a live presenter talking about different things of what's going on in the community. And so we're experimenting, and we're being right up front that we're experimenting. Uh, invite members to write residents of senior facilities. A lot of these people that are locked down, uh, think about in the old days how you wanted to create a pen pal or, or sent letters to soldiers in war, um, have kids color pictures and send them to the senior care facilities. The kids need something to do. Have them crayon 30 or 40 different pictures and put it in an envelope and mail it to the senior facilities, to the resident, and then, let, then we'll separate them out. And I'm telling you, these people love getting mail. Something different to do. Um, again, another e-clubs, they're all out there. Figure one out on your own. Uh, find an old books, and this is what my youngest daughter's doing. I had no idea she had so many books. She's 16. Uh, two boxes of books, this big, that she no longer reads anymore, uh, are going out to different places. We have a couple of those little libraries by trees. We're going to stock those up uh, as we drive by. The next time we're in town, we're not going to make a special visit for it, but uh, we've got something to go on our next trip to the store we've kind of cited them out or create your own little library. If you were in the, cause we live in the country, so we can't do that, but put your own in, make your own out there and put your own books out there. Uh, that being said, if you have your own ideas of what would be really good to do both virtually, like what we're doing here 
or little projects in the community, please type them in the comments or send them to me in email. Because one of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to create a dynamic page. We're going to list your club virtual meeting. So if you are opening your meeting to the district or other members, put it to me and I'm going to put it on the uh, district website on the home page and we will have a listing of the various clubs. What I'm going to be doing is uh, also taking the different information that we have out there that is sent to me and I'm going to create an addendum to our coronavirus guide of different things to go and that's going to be going out and it's going to be a growing list for all of us uh, to what's going on. As members, we also need to remember as Rotarians that we're part of a worldwide organization. So we don't have to recreate and we can learn from others too. And so I'm highlighting these guys, uh, District 7620 has put together uh, a wonderful program. Uh, this guy was actually in Atlanta at the National and he did something in the emergency, emergent leaders session uh, where they're putting together groceries and medicine delivery program but what is interesting about this particular presentation is they focus on the back end and not, it's not just a feel good story of look what we're doing. It's let me show you how we're using technology and machines to put this program together so that you can create it yourself without going insane. So their webinar is tomorrow at 6 PM. And if this is something that is interesting to you, re, uh, do it yourself. And it's kind of like a rotary showcase. So that being said, um, I want to start, uh, when we do our district club meetings, uh, uh, like here, and the next one's going to be next Wednesday in the afternoon, evening, uh, I want to highlight somebody from within our district, a program that you think other Rotary clubs can do. So if you want to be put on deck for that, email me privately, uh, and we'll try to make you content. I want to make it like a five to seven minute presentation, not just what we do not just what you're doing, I want how you did it so that and how to help other people create this project that you are doing for your community. So something we can see that we can share. So I want to give other suggestions of what's going out there. Remember, we are a huge, huge organization and not all help has to be virtual. We're talking virtual, but there are plenty of places that still need people help physically. And so the first place I want to send you to is United Way. Don't forget your local United Way. They typically have a master place or a master list of places that need help. So you can adopt one or you can help one out there, figure out what's going on for certain members. Uh, Meals on Wheels. Uh, Newark Rotary is working with Meals on Wheels in their area. See what's in your area. And they have, they're very, very specific. They have rules you cannot talk to people more than six feet. I've seen a lot of people where they call and their rule, at least in the one here in Elmira, is the, they're delivered, they're left on the doorstep, and then they call and say, your food is on your doorstep. And so people are keeping social distancing. They're wearing gloves, they're doing the mask things when they deliver. So they're doing all kinds of things. Red Cross, they need help. They particularly need blood. Uh, they're running very low, as you can imagine. Um, so if uh, your Red Cross is looking to help facilitate a blood drive, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go and give blood yourself, but you can help facilitate putting that together with them if there's some members in your Rotary Club that this is in their wheelhouse. Uh, food banks and pantries need a lot of help. This food that's going out and being delivered to communities and people that can't get out, uh, check what your local food bank is doing. Rochester Southwest is working with Foodlink, and they've invited other Rochester area clubs to help them uh, and do clubs to join them. And the last thing is New York State. Oh, let's try that again. New York State has a, uh, a volunteer program out there. So if you go to Serve NY, they will sort you or filter you to different places where they need different socials. Now, yes, that's me. Uh, I want to share some video conferencing basics from a security perspective, and there are lots of tools out there. We did talk to them briefly earlier, Zoom, WebEx, GoToMeeting, and I have those links available to you on the, the response sheet. Uh, Zoom seems to be the most common at the moment, and they do have a free version, so I'm going to focus on this one here, but it really doesn't matter what tool that you use, you want to get over there. So 
I like it, Zoom because it's fairly easy for beginners to use and to use it as a participant. If you want to host your own, own event, it's not much more difficult, a few extra buttons, but other than that. So the bottom line is whatever tool you use, there are many ways to ensure that we can get together and keep Rotarians connected. So let's talk Zoom. They have a free level. The free level limits you to 40 minutes. And uh, we would have been cut off and Zoom would have shut us off if I didn't have us on the paid level. So th and, and they don't give you a warning or anything. They just say 40 minutes, boop, meeting over. All right. And it's limited to 100 participants. In our case, for this district meeting, we got up to 109. Uh, and so I actually expected to get 100. I bought the next level up. So I can actually host 300 people, but that's $50 more a month. Um, you for the the, uh, the extra participants. Now, if you want, the first level of Zoom is actually $15, um, and you get up to 100 people, and you get 24 hours of meetings. So that's not bad. I like that. We record this. Uh, the free level used to allow dial-in in conferences, because we have some people in our Rotary Club that they don't do computers. They just take the phone, they dial in, and they can interact with you and have the meeting this way. Uh, Zoom has turned that off for the free level uh, because the bandwidth got overwhelmed. So if you need that, then you need the pay level. Um, so for the most of us, oh, every Rotary Club out here, I think the $14 level would work as far as that if you need more than 40 minutes. If you're gonna keep it under 40 minutes, then the free level is just fine. Uh, the next level above that goes to $150. All right. Zoom and your security. This is really very important. If you're using Zoom or any other platform, you need to make sure you're using it securely. In short, there are plenty of bored people out there, as you can imagine, and what they're doing is they're crashing open Zoom meetings. What do I mean by crashing? Well, if you set your meeting up to open, and you can see over on the left the area, uh, who can share right now? At the moment, hosts, me, unless I specifically give it to you. Uh, if you have it as share, what they've been doing is they could, and the way Zoom works is it shares the screen of whoever's talking the most. It automatically dynamically shifts. What they were doing is they were sharing porn. <laughs> and uh, in educational systems to kiddies. Uh, and so they were crashing these Zooms uh, that were wide open and just putting all kinds of filth and disgusting out there uh, and showing obnoxiousness and interrupting meetings. And so the Zooms were trying to shut off the meetings and you can kick somebody out, but then they can come back in because we didn't live, live it. And so in our case, that's why I tried the waiting room. So everybody came into the waiting room and I had to approve you to join this live app. Um, there's a lot of other things that you can do. Just look at the security settings. They actually have a little thing right next to it. It explains what they do. It's a quick, easy fix. Zoom actually wrote a blog about it. That's the Zoom 12 link at the bottom. Uh, I would read that, uh, the Zoom start link, that is um, about 18 different how to get started with Zoom, very short videos. It's their website on how to get started with Zoom. I'm not going to read everything over here for you. I just want you to be aware of, if you're going to become a host, at least do not open it wide open. Have some level of control uh, to keep those obnoxious people from doing nasty things and making it look bad for us. So I'm going to close with this, and I uh, had the spy camera up and running in our district governor's website up at home. He doesn't know I've got a camera there. And I was taking pictures of him. No, I'm curious. Uh, and this is, you know, behind the scenes here. He, he's being very busy, you can see. Uh, trying to do different things. Thank you for the request, Register. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. So what I'm going to do is if I'm going to unmute all right now, I'm going to stop showing our screen here. So hold on a second. And we are going to turn off the sharing. So that means everybody's going to come here. I'm going to shut this down. And I'm now going to open it up to social hour. And I'm going to unmute all for a minute. Okay, and before I uh, allow people to talk, the way this generally works is if this becomes overwhelming, I will kind of mute all, but if you hold your space bar down, uh, you will be able to talk, kind of like the old walkie-talkie system. So 
Hi. 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 Hello, everybody. Hey. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Kids. Hello, everybody. It's amazing. Oh, look at that. Hello. 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 Now, first, um, Tom, let me thank you for putting this program together. I think it's very valuable. I've been able to attend three club meetings by uh, video sharing so far, uh, and I welcome the opportunity to attend other clubs uh, if you can set it up. So take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, I do think that, um, that my recommendation, Tom, has been for clubs to keep as close to a normal agenda as possible. Uh, there's some things you can't do, but I really want to emphasize the opportunity for uh, socialization. Uh, with so many of our members being alone at home, uh, they need the outlet to be able to uh, share thoughts, ideas, activities that will be productive during this time period. So uh, I encourage everybody to take advantage of that. Um, we've still got three months left in this Rotary year. And then we're going to be transitioning to the next Rotary year. And I want to encourage everybody to uh, uh, finish out the year on a positive note as best we can and um, look forward to the coming year. So thanks to everyone for being in on this today and um, look forward to participating in some of your meetings. We've got um, uh, Brighton Rotary this evening and Clifton Springs tomorrow at noon. Thanks very much again, Tom. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, Linda, our incoming governor, how about holding the space bar down and give us a, a few words? Um, I, I'm very excited that you're pursuing the Zoom. Um, we're doing this on RI level. Um, Dave and I attended a zone meeting with a lot of the higher ups telling us what was happening on the RI level. So we need to get the district as involved as possible. And I really appreciate Tom taking the time to put this together for us. You're welcome. All right, anybody else? Hit your space bar. Hello, this is Mark Clement from Pelmire Masson and Club. Hello, Hello. everybody. Uh, hey, just, to let, just to let you know, uh, Pelmire Masson will be doing a Zoom meeting on Wednesday at noon which is our normal time of meeting. This will be our first club meeting. And I just want to encourage everybody to get out, get their donations out early to the various organizations. For example, last week, Palmyra Masson then sent out checks, over $5,000 in checks to like the food pantries, Meals on Wheels, Good Neighbor Fund. And I encourage all the other clubs to do it sooner than later. Uh, that being said, um, I didn't touch on this. There are some clubs that are allowing people to donate online um, through either PayPal or something to that effect. Uh, something to look into yourself if you want. The downside to that is PayPal gets their 3% and change. So something to keep and facilitate over there. I know some clubs are still mailing in checks and that's fine too because you can uh, digitally deposit those and have the money available right away. Uh, if you are doing things like that, please let us know. Again, uh, Mark, uh, make sure I get the link to that so I can add that to the district website. Uh, and let's um, be socially aware of what other clubs are doing and look for ideas. Uh, you can't really do this wrong unless somebody uh, uh, comes in and steals your thunder per se, like the security warning. Um, just people will have give a ton of grace if you make mistakes and you struggle. It's fine. Don't worry about making mistakes when you're doing this. Other than taking your camera to the bathroom, don't do that. Hey, Tom, I have one quick question. Uh, <clears throat> do you, does a person need to have Zoom downloaded to participate or simply reply to the uh, invitation and click on the link? 
Uh, Zoom does not require you to do that. You can click on the link and use the interaction through Chrome or your other email browsers. However, the experience is better if you download the Zoom app. Thank you. Tom, a question for you regarding your PowerPoint presentation. Was that just a share, a share that you would put together for us? Uh, partly, yes. Um, it, someone uh, uh, it was done by another district, and I grabbed their template and <laughs> deleted a couple slides, added six more of my own. Uh, like I said, there's no re reason to recreate everything if somebody else is doing it, and they were more than happy to share it. Same with the COVID response guide. I put together that was emailed to me when I found some other uh, district doing it and I adapted it to our district. So uh, I would say 40 50% of that is stuff that was provided by another district and then I padded it out with my own. So don't recreate if you don't need to. I have a question. Yes, Mary. I uh, is there any place you can go to find out how to set up zoom how to use Facebook Live. And the second question is, is there any place that has the pros and cons of various tools available? Um, the link, the PDF that is available on the district homepage, and it's also going to be emailed and put on social profiles. The last page has a lot of links. Um, and so, yes, all those links are there. As far as pros and cons, um, I haven't seen one yet, but I'm sure if you Google pros and cons of Zoom versus something else, you'll get more than you want to know. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Yes, Clark. When you were sharing that PowerPoint presentation, what exactly were we seeing? Were we seeing what your screen looks like? Um, when I do, when you do a screen share within Zoom, I have three screens. And so it said, what screen do you want to share? When I opened up a PowerPoint and a presentation, it actually was on screen number three. So I shared screen three. Uh, screen two is the, all the cameras in front of me. And screen one is uh, what you guys were typing and texting so that I could have uh, the ability to do that. Um, on a lot of cases, most people don't have a three screen setup. Um, if you're going to do something like this, it's actually helpful to have a neighbor right next to you saying, hey, Frank, he's got a question for you. And so they could facilitate in your ear uh, that George is asking a question or something like that. Again, this, I would just play with it, see what happens. If you are struggling, uh, I had to keep letting people into the room because I've, I've turned on the waiting room. Uh, for our Rotary meeting tomorrow for my club, I will not turn on the waiting room, but we will try other things. It's a trial, even for me. I think it's possible to just share one of your windows as well. Yes, I, I think it does. Let me see. Let me get into a share mode here. Let's see. I'm going to share. Uh, um, uh, yeah, apparently you can share just a, a window. So I can share um, a screen. So this is just the screen. Uh, and apparently Zoom wants me to write the review. So it just depends. Hi, Tom, this is Marina. I actually am doing this over my phone just to see how different it looks on the phone as opposed to my computer. But what level of Zoom did you use for this meeting? Uh, this meeting, I have the pro level, which is the first paid level. That is uh, $14.99. Oh, there's a link on the COVID response sheet that gives you a 10% discount so you can get it for $13.20 a month. Um, okay. But what I did for this particular meeting, since I had 176 people registered, is I spent $50, well, in this case, $38, uh, to buy the level that allows more than 100 people to check in. I don't think anyone in our district needs to do that. I have it for 30 days. I'm not going to renew that. Uh, but I figured for our very first meeting, that was what we should do. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Tom, Bill Gormont here. Hi, Bill. Uh, when a club or perhaps a committee chair wants to host a meeting, if they send you a note, are you then incorporating that on a district link? Did I understand that correctly? Yes. Thank you. That was easy. <laughs> yeah, uh, as much as we can out there, we'll try and do this. Uh, and facilitate uh, 
yes, I'm working at home. Um, I actually, my home business, my wife's business is a karate school. So as you can imagine, we were one of the first hit. Um, so we are doing uh, training webinars and seminars daily uh, for each class. So she's actually using Facebook Live group. So the Little Dragons has got to go. Somebody needs to turn off their dog. Um, I did it. Tom? Yes. Oh, hit the space bar, Janet. Say that again. There you go. Okay. So when people share their link for their Zoom meetings, make sure they include their ID. So if they're inviting people to join, we know how to get on. Right. And uh, what I'll do is I'll also have the email address if they have questions about the Zoom meeting or whatever meeting that you end up doing for your club that they ask you and not me because I don't want to be tech support for all your meetings. Hey, Tom? Love you, but now. Yeah, John. And the uh, uh, Rotary has got a 20% discount for Zoom. Yeah, 20. I meant it. I said it wrong. It is a 20% discount through the Rotary um, whatever website. I've got the direct link on the COVID response. Okay. John? Yes, Becky. Becky Wilson. I just wanted to share some advice. I had a hard time hearing everyone uh, through my computer mic. So I hooked it up to my Bose speaker and I can hear everybody loud and clear. So if you have a Bose speaker and, and have trouble hearing this conversation, I'd advise uh, connecting it to it. Uh, that's good advice. Actually, this thing right here, my microphone actually died three days ago. Lovely time for it to die. So we're actually using the microphone on the laptop and this should be in the mail tomorrow because I use this a lot. Um, and so my voice is probably a bit more echoey chamber than I usually do on a presentation, but again, it is what it is. Uh, Marina, you're raising your hand. Did you have a question? No. Okay. I'm Dave Hannon. Yes, Dave. Uh, I just want to add a, a word of caution. Uh, we remain in a highly partisan political environment. And I think it's important for uh, Rotary leadership and, and club sites to remain apolitical to the extent possible. So continue to monitor your sites. And if your members post something that may appear to be partisan in any way, uh, delete that and uh, keep it clean for Rotary. It's going to affect our membership going forward. So uh, we, we welcome all comers and um, you know, we don't want to alienate anybody in the process. Which is one of the reasons I specifically showed left side and right side in the presentation. You can do that. Just, you know, be respectful. That's the big thing. Four-way test. All right. Anybody else want to chime in before we uh, end this meeting? Hey, Tom. Yes, Roger. Roger. Kudos to you for stepping forward and doing this for the district. Thank you. Uh, I think it's been very helpful, and I think a lot of the folks here got information that will be helpful down the road. Take care, my friend. Thank you. All right. And you could share uh, this. One last question, if I might. Yep. Just, just in terms of setting up the club, for example, I'm in Penfield Rotary Club. Should any one of us be the person who sets it up as the host? Does it make a difference who sets it up? Um, Yes, it does. Um, you can actually co-host and share different hostings if you want. Um, to me, if you're going to do, if you're going to, if you're going to go past the 40 minute mark, somebody needs to pay for it. Whoever paid for it becomes the host and they add others. Um, I haven't tried to do a co-host yet. I'm going to be trying that tomorrow with President Dubois. Um, and if not, then uh, the other ability is you can you know, uh, Dick is going to be doing a presentation. So uh, if he can't co-host, and I haven't tried this yet, he'll end up, I'll give him control of the meeting and he'll be able to use his slide presentations and so forth. So um, I'll have more information on that a little bit later because not tomorrow's meeting, but the next meeting, we're having a third party non-Rotarian do the, a live presentation for us. So we'll see. Tom, Don Milton here. Thank you very much for setting this up. It's fantastic. Thank you, Don. All right. Mm. People are dropping out. Okay, I'll, 
I'm going to wave goodbye, and we'll see you on the digital side. Uh, look for the emails. See ya. Bye. Bye. Nice job. Great job. Bye. Bye. Super job. Great job. Great job.